All right, so this video is going to cover um, actually brazing uh, and how to use an oxyacetylene torch to braze. So what we have set up here is a copper coupling. Now when you guys are practicing, uh, you're going to be swedging and creating your own uh, joints because copper fittings are very expensive. Um, and what we're going to be using to do this is going to be um, what we're going to braze with is going to be uh, this brazing rod here. Um, most of the braz uh, brazing rods we have are similar. They're some type of um, alloy. Now these brazing rods don't require any flux or anything. Um, they do make some brazing rods that are 45% silver that do require either a flux on the outside. So some brazing rods will have a flux on the outside of them, like a blue flux, um, and we'll do a joint with that. Um, or sometimes um, with 45% silver, you actually put a brazing flux on first. Now, this is uh, a 15% silver rod called Harris 15. It does not require any um, cleaning of the joint. Uh, if it was really dirty, I would sand it clean but it doesn't require any flux or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my torches and um, walk through this. So, I've got my torch set to a neutral flame. And what you don't wanna do with your torch is you don't want your tip to come right up against it because that tip is very, very hot and it will heat the copper right up and if you're not careful, I now have a hole in the copper. Now, as you watch this joint, um, You can see the copper, and hopefully it comes through on video changing color. So when I'm brazing, I'm looking for the copper to be an orange color like so. And at that color orange, it's enough to melt the braze. Now, it's starting to get a little warmer than I needed, and so I'm moving the torch away. And it got a little warm. So I'm trying to get right at the temperature where the braze will melt. So when you were soldering, you probably found that it was difficult to fill large holes with solder. Braze, on the other hand, can actually uh, fill larger holes. Now you'll notice that this is gray looking. Um, what you'll see is uh, they were actually discoloring the metal um, because of the temperature we're getting it up to. So to do this joint, I'm going to warm it up. I'm looking for that nice orange color and you need that your pipe and your fitting to be that. So I'm starting to get to that orange now. I'm going to pull the heat back and just keep it Try to keep it at the right color and work all the way around. The joint. Like so. And it should look nice and smooth and even. So there's no big lumps hanging off of it. It's nice and smooth. What we see a lot of times is we see um, a joint and we'll see somebody come in and they'll bring the torch and the uh, braze in at the same time and they'll go like this.
And I'm, I'm not doing a good job of doing it bad. But when I see braise on the side of a joint that's just a bubble, like here, to me that says that you didn't have your joint hot enough because all I'm going to do is come in here with some more heat and warm that copper up and you can watch that braise just flow right into the copper. So your braise should be nice and smooth when you're done. Now there's a lot of braise built up right there, um, way more than is needed, but at least I know that it's adhered. Now I'm going to cool this joint down. Shut my door chop. I'm going to cool this joint down and show you what it looks like once it has cooled down. So now that this joint is cooled down, we'll zoom in and you can see um, it's nice, even all the way around. And that's what you're looking for. The flip side of this, uh, this is the joint I did that wasn't as good. And I also didn't fill all the way around it, as you can see here. So, and then here is the side of the pipe where I had a hole and fixed it. I don't know that I would ever try to fix a hole like that as a permanent fix in the field. But if you were in an emergency and needed to get something going, um, that may be one way. I have laid braze down. Um, I've had older copper that has uh, started to like crack down it and I've laid braze, you know, layers of braze over the outside of it to hold it and uh, try to get by uh, for a period of time. So um, I was doing this one in the straight up position. Um, the lower joint here we did drawing up. The braze will follow your heat. So if you're trying to do the bottom side of a joint, um, if you keep your torch, if you warm everything up, but then keep your majority of your heat up, it will actually draw that braise up inside, um, which will be helpful. Um, out in the field, you'll find that you're doing braising in some of the most awkward positions uh, you can imagine. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to walk through the shutdown procedure for the torches. I know there's another video that covers this, but uh, we can't be adamant enough about this. Close your tank valves. Close the oxygen. Close the acetylene. Open the knobs on your torches to get all your gauges down to zero. Close the torch tip, loosen your thumb screws, and then last but most certainly not least, neatly roll your hoses up over your tanks. And again, put in some effort so that it looks good. If these hoses fail on you out in the field, uh, you can you can be in a real world of hurt if your torches, look, you know, something like your hoses stop working on your torches when you're out there working. So, torches are stowed away. Again, gauges are all at zero, 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 and zero behind the sunlight. And the tip is stored down inside. So when you're all said and done, that's what your torture should look like.